I love genetics, so I started playing around with Art Breeder, and I was making a whole bunch of characters because I like to make stories where over time the characters will breed or come upon certain things and they're basically like really 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 short stories so I decided to do that with this don't really have any names for the characters but I have like their whole background and just over time what happens and I'm hoping that over time humans will kind of evolve into this other thing based on what they're doing I guess so I'm gonna be making it up as I go along. So this person is a warrior and her parents, she came from uh, a long line of people who were warriors. As you can see, I had genes for some of the others and over here, right, over here, uh, she came, she had a mother, this person, was a result of these two. And then her mother fell in love with a humanoid character characters not really human they're like an extension of humans they have a mutation that makes them more powerful at night and as you go into the left side of the family his side of the family you notice that they came from sort of zomboid vampirish characters uh, with a little bit of fae in there so she is part fae this character basically is a vampire fae character and this is a normal human being so the this character has a little bit of something else inside of her but they decide to get together and now we have the warrior and i think it's really really cool how it just places the genes together and we get a whole new character so now we're gonna find um uh, something for her and she is as i said a warrior so she goes across the land she's hunted and she hasn't really come into contact with a lot of humans and she stays when she grew up she stayed with like her father's side of the family so let's see what our breeding gives us so we get uh, a human pixies they're called uh, we're elfish elfish characters and uh let's choose him i like to mix in the genes a little bit imagine how this person would kind of grow up and the pixies or the guy on the right he they didn't grow up with war on their mind they grew up becoming one with nature and he saved her life through some war that they had and he basically said look if we're going to get along or end this war we have to become one with nature so she joined his clan and they taught her how to listen to the forest and whatnot as a warrior utilizing that became very beneficial for her and they had a child together so let's see now because pixies are so fair and they're kind of small plus you have the vampire blood mixed in we're going to have a bit of that as well and uh, mix in the genes from the white hair from the father's side and i imagine we get something like this the eyes would be a little light and uh we get that he has has the roughness from the warrior side of his family from his mom's side of the family and when he grows up he would be something like that and we'll get a little bit more of that in there because he does have kind of that the white fair genes in there but he has melanin from his mother's side of the family who does have uh black genes uh, melanated genes all right so we widen his face a little bit so he can look a little bit more masculine and he grows up wanting to be a warrior like his mother his father's side of everything basically told him be one with the forest we have to learn to you know live in nature and then his mother is violently killed as she grows up as his mother grew up she was like i don't want to fight anymore i fell in love with this man and i don't want to fight anymore because it actually i know how to fight but for the benefit of my child i would like to have peace you know just so my children are safe she had fallen in love with his culture and has learned to live in peace with nature. Unfortunately, not everybody has done that. So even though this new offspring has grown up under the guise of being one with nature like his parents, he has seen firsthand what comes as a result of that. His brothers and sisters also try to live the life of the pixies in the forest, but that doesn't work out very well. So he goes about and lives a warrior lifestyle. So you would think that mixing with human blood would make him live a little bit longer it doesn't he grows up he gets harder and he kills a lot of people partly running from the trauma of losing his mother during this time there are monsters that have made their way over the horizon they're these strange creatures who have these long sloping backs kind of like a shield of armor gigantic surfboard curve concave 
uh, thing of armor and their bodies are soft underneath and every time these humanoids or other creatures would try to kill them they would be very hard to kill so he tries to lead a mission on that and as he leads on the mission he meets with someone and realizes that those creatures were actually engineered what has stood the test of time is knowing that everyone was kind of almost on an even playing field. Everyone stayed in their region for the most part until we had the, vamp the, the vampires and the fays and the pixies and the humans. And they all started breeding with each other. All of them have the ability to breed with one another. Some of them were able to mix their genes with magic, meaning that if magic was a part of their family, they didn't want to breed with males or males didn't want to breed with females, whatever the case is. They could actually have specific magic spells done through other humans or types of humans that could do those spells in order to mix them. So let's say that there were two, a vampire and a fae, or a vampire and a human, for example, up here. We have this pair, this is a pixie, the white-haired ones, and she is part fae, part pixie maybe, and she and her girlfriend did not have the means to procreate the biological way. They could actually have a spell made. In this case, they knew how to do the spell each other in order to basically give each other a baby or give one of them a baby and that's how we got that and for the longest while we had genes like specific genes from different ones that were kept in the family on purpose then we had those that came strictly from the vampire side of things vampire phase with some of the human genes and that's how we got him and her anyway this guy realizes that they need help he's a little bit harsh because of his harsh vengeful nature he has kind of lost touch with the environment but he meets someone who previously was married to someone else who did have that connection to the environment so these two get together she calms him down kind of softens his edges and tells him that yeah this planet that we're on we're not there's something here that doesn't belong here this fantastical beautiful large planet that we're all worrying over is steadily trying to be conquered by something else some the creatures the engineered creatures that they saw before something made them these creatures are not from the planet and whatever made them is so technologically advanced that they are wiping us out. They're using these creatures to try and wipe them out. Even the vampires, the purest breeds of vampires, are not stronger than these things. They're having problems, even bringing down these creatures that are wearing this armor over all their bodies. The two have a son. Once again, his father is in touch with nature, not as much as his mother, and his mother primarily raises him. After his father dies, the boy promises that as he gets older, his father, or rather the legacy of his father, will live on and he will take care of these creatures. As this guy gets older, he meets a group of people. All these people come from all different walks of life. They've all been affected by these engineered alien creatures, which they all nicknamed Golden Death. These people all have someone who they've lost, and many of them come from tribes that were completely decimated by these creatures. The races as they know it are going extinct, and these creatures are also mutating to be able to travel faster to different regions, sleeping less, and eating more. They tell our guy everything that they know about these monsters. Him having a lot of pixie blood in him, he is able to pick up on different changes in the environment and what has been happening, and most of the animals are going extinct. The creatures in some regions are not even attacking the humanoids, they're attacking their food sources. Most of the people here have been living off of plant matter. An interesting development occurs because they lead him to the back of their little shed area, and they say, we have found one of these creatures, like straggling around from the, uh, straggling away from the others and we captured it. For the longest while they've been trying to study the creature. From what it looks like the creature has strange joints and its body is growing out from under the shell which encompasses the entire dorsal section of its body. It has a hollow socket in the armor that looks as though it has no eyes when in fact its eyes are inside but everything vital to the creature is protected. The creatures have long sturdy legs that enable them to run for many hours and run for many miles. They have an impressive sense of smell and a filter in their nose. They also have slight regeneration. This creature had been injured. As a matter of fact, when they were trying to get rid of it, they found a momentary opportunity to strike it. Its leg was basically hanging off and this is how it looks only a few hours later when its leg was almost completely amputated. All that remains of the gore is just a little wound that is healing every second. They have the creature in a welded jail, but they have people around the clock watching it and constantly adding fortifications because the creature also has very sharp teeth like 
objects that they've never seen before that are able to cut through most substances. Having the creature there, he knows that they'll be able to study it. And one of the lead researchers of the group, who is also a hunter, is this girl. She doesn't like our guy at first, but learns to grow on him. They have a daughter that becomes a new researcher for the animals, and has since learned much about the alien creatures, who they've learned can actually survive for many years without food. She's learned that the creatures also recognize faces. After her father had died, the mother and her daughter set out with the rest of the group to distant lands. Upon their journey, unfortunately, she and her mom and the rest of the group are captured by a band of vampires. Some of them have fashioned the alien armor into armor for themselves. They even spend their time torturing one of the captive aliens. They make it a point to feed on the girl and her mother, and they do this with no remorse. They actually keep the girl for a very long time, about 30 years. She is their slave. She understands that there's a chance that she will never go free. But all hope is not lost, because during her captivity, she had children. She bred with one of the chief vampires, against her will, that is. He fed on and violated her many times. She had five children. Three of them were killed. As these band of vampires are so pure that even if they breed with humans, they see the human gene as nothing more than inferior. So they literally breed with humans to feed on the offspring. However, there was one child they had that the mother was able to keep safe for as long as possible. He, out of all of his siblings, had the best skills. He was the fastest and strongest. And so when his family tried to come against him, he would always escape. At nine years old, her son was already faster than all the vampires in his clan. He would feed himself and bring food for his mother. He always swore that he would set her free. At 15, the vampires stopped trying to eat him. They were already convinced that he was too fast and it kind of unsettled them. But then the head chief decided to tolerate his presence and allow him to be among the clan. They would send him out to do things like hunt for them. And because he was so fast, he would have success most of the time because creatures usually couldn't see him coming. He also had no qualms about bringing humans or other humanoids to the clan for them to feed on. He claimed that he would continue hunting for them and doing his best as long as they don't feed on his mother anymore or hurt her. His father never acknowledged him. However, the father did used to brag to the other vampires that because of his genes, he was able to make this human more superior than the other rat humans. When Robin was 19, he was allowed to sit and eat with the vampires. He had many vampire girlfriends. Other vampire tribes would come and visit. The mother was able to now walk out among the tribe on her own, but by this time she was already very old and so slow she wasn't going anywhere. She tried to teach him about the environment, about nature and how to be at one with it, how to research things. He learned how to use critical thinking, but the more he grew older is the more his bloodlust increased. He was still half vampire. From his mother's side, she was mixed with fey, some vampire, human, and other elements. But he is the first of her line that is the purest of vampire since his ancient ancestors. His name was Robin, and as he got older, his mother got sicker and eventually died. For a hundred years, Robin with the vampire clan would hunt humans and the aliens, warring against them. And as their powers increased, as vampires' powers usually do, the older they get, so did the aliens. The one they had in captivity was able to break free. They had fed it residual blood from other creatures, including vampires, who the vampire clan had slain. As a result, this inadvertently made the creature very fast, taking on the skills and features of those it fed on. It became so fast, not even Robin could catch it. So as we can look back in the timeline from Robin's parents, we can see the story we've been following along with his mother, her mother and father, his mother and father, and how the choice can really affect what a person does. It's clear to see also Robin's father's genealogy, so he is as vampire as they come. All the vampires had agreed that because they are now facing a threat, yeah, they're just now realizing this, they must breed better and better. Some would make new vampires. Unfortunately, in this universe, when vampires turn other vampires, it does take away some of their life force, so breeding is actually a better thing for them. Robin bred with Belle and several other females. However, it was the offspring he had with Belle that would prove to be promising 
for the vampires, because now they were all being hunted by these new and improved aliens that they inadvertently created. Their little vampire child showed promise, and because she had more pure vampire blood, she matured faster, but would live much longer. By the time she was 15, or rather the equivalent of a 15-year-old in vampire years, she was three times faster than her father. During this time, the vampires had found a special spell to immobilize the alien herds. The horde of them were becoming unbearable, and many vampire clans have already been wiped out. Robin's vampire clan had to keep on falling back because of it, but his daughter was able to administer the spell to the horde before they got too close to the clan. As Robin's daughter got older, she told her parents that they would have to work together with the other races. Robin had already been grown up as a vampire, and since his mom has been long gone, the last remnants of humanity died with her. He considered himself a vampire, even though technically he was half. But Robin's daughter was smart enough to know that even though she was fast, she was going to need help. Regardless of him having an issue with it, she went out on her own anyway and traveled fast and far and united as many of the races as she could. Of course, vampires were given a bad name because even though all of this was happening and these alien creatures were steadily conquering the entire planet, killing off the life forms and whatnot, the vampires were still helping by doing the same. Not realizing that by doing that, they were inadvertently getting rid of their own food supply. Sure, they could feed on weaker vampires, but that was also bottlenecking their genealogy because they would need more vampires vampires to make more powerful vampires, to defeat these aliens that fed on vampires and everything else. Thankfully, Robin's daughter was not on her own, there were other vampires who shared the same sentiment, and they tried to exercise good faith to the lesser beings in their eyes by guarding their villages and towns and helping them take out some of the aliens. There have been many evolutions of the aliens, who've also been breeding and spreading. Many of them were faster than the previous iterations. What never changed with these iterations was their golden armor that was impenetrable. However, now because they were faster, they had longer legs, and that means there was more surface area for the vampires to do their damage. The creatures, however, were vicious. They would use their long tails to extend behind them, fold in their legs, and use weird muscles on their abdomens like snakes to slither on the ground when they were being attacked so that their soft flesh could not be hurt. One thing that many tribes of many different types of humanoids figured out is that these things were not immune to hot, hot fire. Surely they had some tolerance for it, but if they were to be trapped in an area with fire, they would die. But the fire would have to be hot enough. Most of the kilns and other structures had been destroyed. Robin and her parents spent many years looking for the hottest flame they could find, and they found it. The creature is a massive dragon, and after subduing the creature with her speed and wit, she was able to communicate with it. Even though Robin's daughter was his lineage, his purest form of vampire, she still had the heritage of the pixies that were very much in touch with nature. Robin's ancient ancestor's father's side had the purest form of pixies, and so his daughter, who we'll call Lilac, still had those genes that enabled her to understand her environment, and thus be able to communicate with the dragon to make him also feel what was happening to the environment, and oh he felt it. When Lilac and the dragon bred, they had many offspring, the first of which was this boy. And out of the many offspring Lilac had, he and only a dozen of the others could breathe fire, dragon fire. Their faces were human, but they had wings and the hind legs like a dragon and a tail. As they got older, they would spread out their arms, which had membranes connecting to their hips, and fly high. Many of the humanoids were killed at this point, but these dragon children were able to soar above it all, and for many years, they would rain down fire on the hordes of golden death. As they got older, they would feast on the flesh of the aliens below, until all the aliens were gone. The world was saved. Over time, the draconians would breed with woodland fairies and fays. The children would take on some of the features of their parents and to be able to fly. Over time, human beings made modifications to their genes and physical features. They realized that they were the weakest race of all the humanoids on their planet, and they all but died out. They would breed with draconians, descendants of dragons and vampires, to try and make their bond stronger. They would pair up with these draconians because not only had they saved the world, but they had become the superpower and made an entire capital for their kind. 
Even though all seemed well and they built beautiful, breathtaking cities, they were still prejudiced. Draconians thought themselves better than everyone, and the more pure their blood was to reptilian, the more favorable they were. However, through Robin's lineage and that of lilacs, their descendants started breeding with more modified humans. They were seen as less and less human, just so they could fit in with the other physically superior races. Over time, Robin's descendants developed mutations to make them live longer. And thus, they were able to make many technological advancements. Robin's descendants were the pioneers in leading medical advancements, and soon, space travel. At first, the winged draconians would become so strong that even regular vampiric blood and those that had it could not affect them were disconcerted about the new modified or evolved humans making these advancements in space travel. You see, they lived in their high capital cities, and they were just living it up. They lived a hedonistic lifestyle and it was beautiful and they were free. As far as they were concerned, everyone should bow down and worship their scaly feet because they're the ones, their ancestors are the ones that put an end to the alien invasion. However, because they were too concerned about being worshipped and they had no competition, there was no drive for creativity or other things. The humans, being on the lower end of the totem pole, had more to prove. And unfortunately, because the pixies with their very short lifespan already died out, humans could not afford to be next. They had to make these advancements. The draconians feeling threatened by this would go and attack or try to win over with power. But the humans had become so technologically advanced that they had weapons that could rival the draconians. And they they became scared. As a result, the strongest of Draconians bred into the bloodline and descendants of Robin, and so started the long lineage of reptilian humans. The descendants have successfully solidified themselves on the same playing field as the Draconian. They bred with their descendants as well, and it was they who left the planet and pioneered the other planets of space, touching down on their first paradise celestial body that they would then make their home. And their latest ascendant Eve would be one of the first mothers to help seed the planet with life. The end. This was fun. I like doing stories like this because I go back and I usually look over where they came from. And I know that this is something that I use my imagination for, but I love Spec Bio. I wish they had something similar to this, an Arbiter like this, but with creatures. They do have creatures in this one, but it's not so good. It's more so for humans. So seeing how we went to becoming reptilian, by the way, his races, because they now do have humans or human genes in them, their wings, many of them wouldn't have the display of wings they would have the membrane, which would make them very good swimmers, by the way, and able to regulate their body temperature better. We went for modified humans. I did use some extra uh, genes that they did carry. So this person, it was actually these two that bred, but I used some of the genes that would be closest to what these two were carrying to help to bring out what became this offspring. It's funny how they came from like reptiles and modified human beings. These are reptilians, humans that were modified. And just going further up the line, you can actually trace the genealogy of uh, Robin's descendants. We have the dragons that were then breeding, vampire, lilac breeding, and I use this thing as the dragon genes because there's no actual dragon in there. So bred with the vampire, and then we get that whole race of these superior dragon people, which I thought was very interesting. I liked Lilac and Robin. I don't tend to name the characters in this because you lose track of them very easily, and I wanted the time jump to continue, but they would basically be like the steadfast foundation of the lineage, something that you can call back to for a period of time. I Lilac being faster than her father, Robin, who had a human mother who was violated by the vampire clan who come from a long line of vampires but yet her mother and father her father was part pixie his father was more so pixie and had vampire blood and wanted revenge while his wife basically tried to keep him away from that we go to the warrior woman who fell in love with a pixie purebred pixie who basically said fighting is not all there is and this is when things were a little bit more primitive where these two just got married and had a kid and then she fell in love with this vampire dude and this is how everything started and it's just really cool anyways i hope you enjoyed that silly story if you want to go try out some genealogy for yourself go to artbreeder.com